Okay, so next up, we'll have Kelvin behind Zoom Boxing. And this is where you can play boxing with your friend over Zoom. And this project, they actually won the most entertaining Hack, hack and Roll 2024. And so let us welcome Kelvin, who will present on their project, Zoom Boxing. Oh, hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Let me just share this. Okay. Can you see my screen? Uh, sorry, can, can you see my screen? Uh, just yeah, yeah, double check. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So hi, everyone. I'm Kelvin. Uh, thanks to the NUS Hack Team for letting us present our Hack and Roll 2024 project, uh, Zoom Boxing. So let's go to it. So here's our team. We're a group of year two CS students, and this would be our second year participating in the NUS Hack and Roll. And if you want to contact any of us after the presentation, here's uh, some of our socials where you can contact us. Um, yeah. So to start off the presentation, I thought it good to provide some motivation for why we joined Hack and Roll and some ideas we had up to the hackathon itself. So something I feel uh, is that, you know, hackathons these days are a little bit too serious. They want you to form some solution to save the world or um, build something for good and whatnot, right? But I think as uh, one who enjoys tech, sometimes, you know, you don't want to build something to create value for the stakeholders. You don't want to make anything serious. And um, I think Hack and Roll, with its lack of a problem statement, it's really one of the best hackathons where you can play and just have fun and build. Uh, you know, it's one of the rare opportunities where in a hackathon setting, you can build uh, just for the sake of building. So I would say that given these ideas, a successful project for our team would be one where the judge sort of rolls up to our table and he frowns his eyes a little when looking at our and asks, but why? Why would you build something like this? And I think the most of the time, the only answer we will have is uh, why not, right? So uh, I guess just as a side note, um, I think this is a great way to build fun projects and to have a fun time at a hackathon, but it may not uh, res uh, be a great winning strategy uh, for hackathons. So now that you understand uh, a little bit about our approach to hack and roll, let's go through a little bit of our ideation process and what were some of the strategies we used in order to think up um, this year's uh, hack and roll project idea. So beyond just throwing uh, random ideas and hoping that one of them is uh, interesting to work on, I think there are some good uh, ways where you can drive your ideation process. So one thing uh, I like to do when uh, working uh, in hackathons is to have some sort of uh, central driving theme, uh, which helps to spark some ideas. So when approaching head and rope, uh, one theme that our team likes to play with is uh, ideas that cross the line between sort of the tech world and the real world. And I found that this theme is actually quite uh, helpful for helping us uh, think of pretty interesting ideas. So to give some um, examples of ideas that would play on this idea of uh, merge, crossing the line between sort of the tech world and the real world, um, last year, um, in Hack and Roll, we also built along this theme and we built something called NUS Dining Wars. So the context to this was uh, NUS students um, who pay for on-campus meal plans uh, made use of this dining app, which, uh, use it, which sort of grants them transferable credits or meal credits that they can use to claim their meals. So the idea was this, if you can reverse engineer this app and understand the API that's used to transfer credits between students. We can make a simple game. Uh, in our case, we made a game of Pong. So you play Pong with your friends. And in this game of Pong, you wager your credits between your friends. And so if one of you loses, you would uh, the, the application would immediately make the API call to transfer the credits from you to your friend. So the fun behind this was that uh, if, you've played, if you lose enough, you might not have enough credits to eat dinner that night. And so I think even though the core product was just a simple game of Pong, uh, the, the 
fun idea to this was that the stakes actually play in the real world. And that is uh, sort of how we move, uh, created this idea along with the theme uh, that we have. So thinking along the same idea of integrating sort of real world concepts into sort of tech uh, projects, we came up with our idea for this year's hack and roll as well. Zoomboxing, right? So Zoomboxing is a video chat boxing game. You just hop on a video call with your friend and then, oh wait, is the video playing? Just Okay, yeah. So you just hop on a video call with your friend and you punch each other till one person knocks out. And there are some, there are some skill elements to this as well. Um, so you don't just punch randomly. You have to punch on the same side where you see your friend is. And you can also dodge by moving your head uh, left and right when as you see uh, punches coming in. So you have to react to the other person's moves as well. So as you can see, it's just a normal network game. But I think the fun part to this was sort of integrating the idea of having controls that fall in the real world. So it's just you chat, but the controls are with your real uh, body movements. So how did we go about building Zoomboxing? So the first problem we had to tackle was being able to identify punching from the webcam. Right. To solve this, we made use of an existing computer vision model uh, called PostNet. So PostNet is pretty cool. It's able to identify and track key points of a person. So you can see these key points being tracked on uh, this lady over here. So they, can, they track key points like your shoulder, uh, your wrist, and your elbow, your nose, and things like that. So using these points, we then had to brainstorm and think, how can we develop heuristics in order to de uh, detect a punch uh, by just detecting the location of these points on the person? Um, we looked at sort of existing solutions of detecting poses and detecting uh, movements, but we found that uh, the problem we had was a little bit unique and a little bit difficult. So if you look at sort of the lady over there, she's standing quite far away from her camera. And so there's a good view of her entire body sort of uh, uh, fr front facing her, right? But the angle that we wanted for zoom boxing was a person sitting in front of a webcam, sort of how you're seeing me now. And we don't want to enforce that the user has to stand up and move away from their laptop. So we'll we had to be able to detect punches just from this webcam angle. And uh, what we realized is that uh, uh, we want to make the user punch towards the screen. But by punching towards the screen, uh, we actually end up losing a lot of the important points uh, when, we, when the punch is being thrown. So when you punch, um, your, your face tends to block the screen. And so that that meant that um the the as sort of the computer the post post net model would lose track of your elbow or your shoulder and it's like that. so this made it a little bit difficult for us to detect the the key movement we want in our game. So after thinking about it, we decided we can use this sort of glitchy behavior uh in our favor. So we just added one extra element to the game uh a ready position. So the idea of the ready position is that uh, before any punch, the player would have to put their hands up um, towards their face. So it's sort of mimicking the idea of a guard in boxing, All right, which helps with some of the game immersion as well. So you need to get in the ready position, and then the game would detect that you're ready, and only after you're ready would you be able to punch. So uh, this... This is pretty helpful for us because the ready position is easy to detect. Your high arm is in the camera and all key points are also being shown. So this is an easy uh, pose for us to detect. Um, and then in order to detect a punch after a ready position, we just detect whether we lost track of your uh, wrist or your elbow in a, a, a quick moment. Uh, another cool side effect to having this um, game element of the ready position is that we are able to prevent uh, players from sort of punching uh, repeatedly and then just winning through uh, sort of sheer force. So if they keep having to go back into a ready position before they can land their next punch, uh, we are able to slow down the pace of the game and make it more uh, sort of a skillful game rather than just sort of punching repeatedly. So 
Now that we know how to detect punches, how can we integrate this together with a video chat? So for the post estimation model, what we did was we just took the entire model using the heuristics that we had. And then we made use of a technology called tensorflow.js, which is able to run these uh, computer vision models in the browser. So by running in the browser, we don't incur any latency of trying to do detection on sort of any sort of edge server or anything like that. By doing all the detection on your browser itself, we have the lowest latency we can get. So then we on our back end, we set up a basic socket server, which helped to handle our lobby system and matching clients together to start again. After clients are matched, uh, we ensure that all communication is done peer to peer. So if you, if you match in a game with me, all the communications don't run through the server, but rather just from um, uh, between our two computers. And so we, we do that through this technology called WebRTC. And WebRTC is pretty convenient because it also um, allows streaming video feeds between two peers as well. And so with WebRTC alone, we're able to handle our message passing for game logic, and we're able to implement our video chat as well. So with that, we have our whole setup for the game. Uh, yeah, but I guess, you know, no hackathon project comes without challenges. So uh, here are some of the challenges that we had while trying to build Zoomboxing. So when dealing with some of our client-server interaction, it turns out that a lot of the client-side security features that are implemented in your browser to protect you uh, interfered with our implementation of Zoomboxing. So we had lots of cost issues, uh, like cross-origin uh, issues, uh, that we weren't able to resolve um, while using the libraries that we had. They, they were supposed to be simple issues to fix, but somehow we weren't able to resolve them. And notice that uh, uh, aspects of our implementation like WebRTC or camera access through the browser were either don't work or they're less permissive when you're using a HTTP server. But when you're testing your code and you're just uh, sort of developing, you don't really have a HTTPS server uh, ready for you to use. Uh, so that, that was kind of difficult for us to solve as well. So given the time constraint of a uh, hackathon, you know, we didn't have time to, to fix all these issues. So uh, by the our way of seeing everything was just to throw everything behind a reverse proxy and then use Ngrok to tunnel traffic from the internet. And the, uh, the good thing is that Ngrok provided us with a HTTPS server every time as well. So that's pretty convenient. And by throwing everything behind a reverse proxy, uh, everything comes from the same origin. So both your front end, your back end are on the same origin. So you don't need to worry about cost because everything is uh, coming from the same origin. So the next issue we had was sort of punch detection. So I've described the logic that we used earlier, right? It detects sort of uh, missing, keep, uh, missing points uh, uh, in the model. And in a sense, it's a pretty loose heuristic. So it does lead to some glitches when registering punches, and that does affect the game experience sometimes. So um, occasionally you would you may uh, run into issues like uh, punches being detected even though you didn't throw a punch. And that, that wouldn't be so good because you can't punch, uh, you can't dodge a punch that you never saw coming. Uh, another issue is that uh, we used a pretty, um, I guess our, our punch detection wasn't fine-grained uh, enough. So the idea was that if you punch with your left hand, then it's just a, the, the model would detect that, oh, you punched on the left side. And if you punch with your right hand, then the model would detect that you punch on your right side. But the issue with that is that what if you punch with your right hand to the left side or your left hand to the right side? And so that caused some confusion as well. And so I think if we were to continue developing uh, zone boxing, this would be a a fun aspect for us to improve on if we could improve the punching and we create such that oh players could punch at different areas of green based on their punch direction and things like that it would make the game a lot more skillful and a lot more interesting because then you would have to dodge with a lot more precision based on where you see the punch going to land and i think in terms of game immersion it would be a more immersive sort of real world boxing experience as well
So lastly, uh, it was a problem that we didn't realize uh, we would encounter, but it somehow happened. So the struggle was our name. So by using the name Zoom Boxing, uh, the idea behind that was that Zoom is a popular video chat application. We are just a video chat with punching. And so we thought it'd be fun to just make a sort of write on the, the name Zoom and call ourselves Sing. And in fact, we even, as you can see on the slide, uh, designed our landing page to look like the Zoom uh, interface as well. Uh, turns out that backfired. So uh, a lot of when the judges came to our table, they would ask, oh, is this an extension on Zoom? Or how to Zoom in order to implement this? And considering that we spent almost half the hackathon trying to build the video chat ourselves, uh, I think it was a misplay on our part to uh, make uh, others think that, oh, it's actually just using a Zoom video chat, but it's actually a completely separate uh, application altogether. So it, it was an issue that we faced, but we never expected that we would face this. Uh, yeah, and so with that, that's the end of the presentation. If you'd like to see more of the project, you can take a look at the dev post link over there. And yeah, again, if you want to contact any of us, uh, you can contact us. Uh, through the links. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Kevin, for a really interesting talk. And okay, so now we'll open up the Q and A session. Uh, it will be at the same link as uh previous previously. So yeah, just submit your questions there. Okay, so we have our first question in. So Jonathan says, okay, really cool. What was your team's previous experience with making games? And do you aspire to become game devs? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I think for our team, uh, this would have the second game we, um, where the first is uh, the hack and roll project last year. Um, I don't think any of us aspire to be game developers. But I do think games were a big part of why we entered computer science in the first place. And I think games have had a big impact on how we view uh, programming and run projects. All right, great. Okay, uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, just feel free to send them in. All right, uh, seems like we don't have any more questions for now. So we'll move on to the next talk. All right, and yeah, thanks Calvin for joining us today. So uh, our next and final game that we'll be talking about is Curious of Sign Racer. And this is done by the team consists of Brian and Ella. Uh, they actually have two other team members, but uh, they are not able to join us today. And so the Furious of Sign Racer is basically it's basically like you play type racer, but you use sign language instead. And this project actually won as one of the top eight teams at Hack and Roll 2024. And so without further ado, let's welcome the Furious of Sign Racer.
Okay. Can you see screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Okay. I'm. I think my voice is clear enough. Okay. So. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Thank you so much for the introduction, and a big thanks to NUS uh, Hack and Roll for <clears throat> for getting us here, and uh, me and Ella will be presenting like our uh, pro games that we made lah. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, our our friends also cannot join uh, because of some abrupt conditions and yeah. Uh, so uh, my name is uh Sander Sila Brian Kusno. Uh, and my partners is like Annabelle Kira, Elizabeth Tan, and Ella Yofita Sugibowo. Well, we don't uh, mention our link in here because like uh our link in is like the 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 username is the same as our name lah. I mean for some. Uh, unexpected uh, things we managed to all have the same username at our LinkedIn uh, username. So yeah, can check us. Uh, can check us out on LinkedIn. So yes, uh, this is our game called Sign Race, and we uh, there's a we mentioned also ASL that that is that means the uh, American Sign Language, one of the most uh, popular sign language in the world. So, um, can next slide. So this is what we do. We create a type, we inspire from a type racer, type racer game where we type and find the fastest, type as fast as we could, and we combine this with the ASL. So initially we want to make something fun, but also consider uh, the usefulness also. Then we find that type racer as our main concept might sound interesting and also challenging. Uh, the thing to leverage the game excitement is to have another variable. So we are thinking of looking at the current situation in the community and we find those things, the, those voice impaired are having challenges in terms of communication aspect. Uh, society nowadays have also discussed these topics uh, practically in dramas, music and more. And at the end, we get a conclusion to combine ASL into our game to teach also while also having fun. So in the 24 hours hackathon, we reference from one YouTube video to create our game and to get the idea of machine learning and stuff. And yeah, uh, with four of us in the team, uh, we managed to, some managed to uh, get all things uh done. Uh as what like maybe previously Calvin said like it's only 24 hours, but yeah, uh somehow we managed to do it. Like. <laughs> so uh in the first eight hours, uh we built the ML model by training uh 10,000 plus of data. In this case it's the uh, pictures, uh which uh yeah in which is a uh, quite a lot of data. <laughs> and that's why we need like uh eight hours for that. And then we also uh, allocate like eight hours uh, for integration uh, from uh, type racer, the, the basic idea of type racer, and then the concept of uh, American Sign Language with the training model, uh, machine learning uh, model that we have uh, made previously. And also the GUI, and also we did a lot of debugging uh, from that hours we uh, do the projects. And after that, we also uh, allocate like three hours uh, for the fine tunings of codes. In this case, uh, we uh, make the front end using a Python. So maybe that's what makes uh, our, one of the reasons what makes our games special, in this case special, because we also use the front end using Python. Well, uh, that's just because we, uh, the reason is well, because we didn't have the, enough time to do it like maybe in Java and C, uh, combine it with C++ also. And lastly, we uh, have like, we manage like two hours for the finishing and dev post submission. And by the way, if we combine all the, the 8A, 3 and 2, it's only 24 hours, right? Maybe you guys think, uh, where's, the la where's the three hours left? Well, thanks to NUS Hack and Roll also, 
we use the three hours for eating because the food is so delicious. So yeah, big thanks to NUS Hack and Roll, uh, hack, uh, hackers that have uh, provided us with a really delicious food. And yeah, uh, and also the sponsors. Uh. <laughs> and so yeah, what we learned from this 24 hours, right? Um, we think that we uh, managed to learn something new and maybe uh, a little bit, a little bit background for, for all of four of us. Uh, Ella and uh, Elizabeth, uh, is like from computer engineering students. So we are not, uh, uh, so both of them are not from CS background. Uh, me also, personally, I'm a data science student. Uh, and the only CS uh, student is uh, our one and only friends, which is Annabelle. <laughs> and uh, all of us, not all of us is from NUS. Uh, Ella and uh, Elizabeth is from NUS. Uh, me and Elizabeth, eh, me and Annabelle is from SIM, uh, which may maybe some of you know is like Singapore Institute of Management. Yep. So, uh, what we really thought that uh can we 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 can do it is with this one quote that we believe in, that anyone can steal your ideas, but no one can steal your executions. Maybe you know. This uh, person, this guy, this wise man called Nadim Makarim, uh, he's the founder of Gojek and uh, the currently the uh, Ministry of, Minister of Education in Indonesia. So, yep, that is it. And uh, going to the next slide, uh, we are going to um, demonstrate, not we, but like this video will demonstrate the our games uh, and how, do, how does it work. Please enjoy the video. It has no sound, actually. Yeah, we have to complete the uh, break sentence there. Then yeah, after you finish, uh, then the game uh, ended. Lah. And then you, your uh, score in this case is how fast can you go, can you uh, finish the game will be displayed in the leaderboard. So, yeah, this is the, our game. Our, I will say it's a simple game. Uh, and yeah, we, we still need a lot of uh, things to do and we know that it can be done. Uh, with after the 24 hours. So these are the text stack we use. Mostly we use Python, also for the GUI, where you see the leaderboard previously, it was also made from the Tkinder uh, GUI in Python. Then for the machine learning, we use OpenCV, MediaPipe, and also Digital Machine from Google. While media pipe was used to track the points in our hands, uh, and teachable machine was used for to train the data we gather. So, uh, previously we gather some data first. So we take a photo of our hand. Also, considering the media using the media pipe, so the points in our hand are shown. Then, we take around. 60 uh 60 picture for each letter and put it in teachable machine google to train it after we are done with the training we test it and take note which one is not very accurate and we take more picture of that one until it is quite accurate after that we uh combine it integrate it with a python gui for the leaderboards and also uh, the speed and uh, data uh, data storage for, for the Python, which is actually using CSV. And yep, that's all from us. Uh, and maybe uh, one of the challenges that we had is like during the uh, debugging also to combine uh, the concept of uh, type racer game and also the uh, sign language implementation in this case is the uh, the computer fission 
uh, thing is like the most challenging part of us because like uh, for me personally, this is my first uh, hackathon. So it is uh, really memorable. And uh, I also really grateful to meet like three of my other friends. And yeah, uh, somehow we also uh, feel that we are, they, there's a element of uh, luck in our in our uh, win also. And yeah, we think that uh, everyone can uh, do this. And if you are, I, if you are passionate about it, and if you want to uh, really, really go for it. Uh, so I got like one really nice uh, quote that I really like. Uh, maybe some of you know this guy called Lao Tzu. Uh, the more you know, the less you understand. So as what I said earlier that uh, I, I was a data science student. So machine learning is one of the things that I am learning. And uh, with this project, I'm also I also uh meet a lot of uh, new challenges, a lot of new. I mean, from my three uh partners here, I learned a lot from them, and because of that, I I also learned that oh my god, actually I I'm I'm still uh not that clever or not have uh not a wide range of understanding about machine learning and I'm still learning right now. So yeah, that's uh, what we all can do. Lah. And also I think uh, the previously what uh, Saulius has also uh, mentioned is like two years making this, pro making his uh, game and also like Calvin, his second uh, time of joining the hack and roll. So yeah, we all still learn about from uh, what we did. And Hopefully, this can uh, be uh, maybe motivation for all of us also. And I have also a special thanks again to this uh, really nice quote, which is like uh, in front of uh, our tables, that it's not a bug, it's just an undocumented feature. So uh, during the eight hours that we said earlier that it, it is really stressful for all of us, uh, we when we look at this uh I would say what uh, <laughs> this uh, nice picture uh, we all motivated again so because like we knew it can be done like that so yeah this is inspirational so thank you for having this quote uh, and US second roles committee and yeah uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us in this session and listening for us thank you so much guys All right, so yeah, thank you so much, Brian and Ella, for the really inspirational presentation. So yeah, now we'll move on to q &A. And so same link, so just uh, send your question there. Okay, uh, we have some question. So, what was the most difficult part about making the project and the thing you are most proud of? I think one of okay. Uh, sure. yeah. I think one of the most difficult part is the fact that none of us know how to use machine learning in the first place, and we had to learn that before. So, getting the data itself also quite difficult. As first, we gather like a lot, around 30-ish picture for each 
then we realize the accuracy is not very high, then we increase it after. Then, yeah, that was also one of the most proudest thing that we could done. We are able to create such project within the 24 hours, and we also are able to learn a lot. You wanna add something, Frank? Mm, I I do agree with that. And also, uh, I think not just me and uh Ella, but also like, uh, maybe the most difficult uh is staying awake at night. <laughs> and, and well, I for some of us, uh, and also uh, yeah, a lot of uh the participants we didn't sleep <laughs> so sleepless night is a thing and uh, we uh what uh we most proud of is me not uh, not mainly about uh the fact that we uh, managed to somehow we also really uh surprised that we can uh manage to win but also like some of the judge one of the judges uh, reached out to us to collaborate more they like that All right, thanks for that. Um, okay, so any last call for any questions? All right, so there are questions, and yeah, we shall session. So Yeah, so thanks. So I reached the end of I can roll. And yeah, once again, thanks Brian and Ella for joining us today. So uh please feel this stay back home to help us make Friday Hex better. All right, and uh if you have haven't already, uh, do it our telegram channel as well as our telegram chat. So you can scan this QR code here. Oops, sorry about it. I uh, just realized I was showing the wrong screen. Okay, so once again, uh, if you don't mind, please help us uh, fill in this feedback form so we can help make body hacks better. All right. Okay, and once again, uh, if you haven't already, please do join our Telegram channel and Telegram chat using this QR code. Okay, and finally, so annual sectors will be beginning our recruitment soon. So do keep a look out on our website. Thanks for joining us today. So because uh, Friday will be the eve of Chinese New Year, so we won't have a Friday hacks next week. So we will see you in two weeks times. Thanks and bye-bye. Thank you.